and buy more food. Medical neglect. 12 infants among 24 dead in a day at a hospital in India's Maharashtra. Kaiser strikes. Thousands of Kaiser permanent workers go on strike as the US encounters its largest healthcare strike. In solidarity. 2030 FIFA World Cup to be held in six countries across three continents. Dazzling Sichuan. Sichuan stages a fascinating light carnival creating spectacular schemes for holiday makers. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. We have an expansive coverage for you this Thursday night. We begin in neighbouring India. Twelve infants have died in one day at a hospital in the Indian state of Maharashtra, sparking a political storm with the opposition politicians accusing the regional government and hospital authorities of negligence. Twelve infants died in one day at a hospital in the Indian state of Maharashtra on Sunday, sparking a political storm in the days that followed. The fatalities were among 24 deaths at the Shankarao Chavan government hospital in the Nanded district, according to hospital officials and local media. Opposition politicians accused the regional government and hospital authorities of gross negligence on Tuesday. Ramesh Choko Vasudevati's child died at the hospital. We were told that our child had gangrene, and surgery was required to remove the infection. They asked for our consent, and we got scared and signed on the consent form, and later, his dead body came out. Another man whose nephew died said the neonatal unit of the hospital was very crowded on Sunday. He said there were four to five babies in one incubator, which was otherwise designed to hold just one infant. The dean of the hospital did not respond to request for comment on this allegation or opposition accusations of negligence. But speaking earlier on Tuesday, he said the adult patients died of various ailments, including diabetes, liver failure and kidney failure. The Maharashtra government, run by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's party and an ally, has launched an inquiry into the deaths. Here's the state chief minister, Eknath Shinde. The tragedy of Nanded Government Hospital has been taken with utmost sincerity by the government. And in the morning I had called both the secretaries and obtained preliminary information from them. There was no shortage of medicine in the hospital and doctor and staff were present there. At the Shankarao Chavan Hospital on Tuesday, patients crowded the corridors and pigs roamed the premises outside. The chaos outlines wider disarray at most government-run hospitals in the world's most populous country. India's public healthcare system is woefully ill-equipped, plagued by a lack of staff and equipment. Sunday's deaths were the second such episode in Maharashtra in as many months. In August, local media reported that 18 people admitted to a state-run hospital in the Tane region died over a 24-hour period. Holding signs and ringing handbells, tens of thousands of healthcare workers took to the picket lines across the United States. They demanded better pay and benefits through what is called the largest healthcare worker strike in U.S. history. About 75,000 workers at U.S. healthcare giant Kaiser Permanente started a three-day strike on Wednesday. It's the largest ever strike in American healthcare. Those walking off the job include nurses, medical technicians, and other support staff at hundreds of hospitals across California, Oregon, Washington State, Colorado, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. A coalition of unions says the firm has failed to address staffing shortages leaving medics overworked and underpaid. Nurse Juan Ratana was on the picket line outside one Los Angeles hospital. Yeah, we're out here because we want the world to know that Kaiser's being unfair to us. They're not treating us right. We're working through the pandemic. We're working through hard times. We're understaffed, underpaid. They're not giving us what we need to take care of our patients properly. Kaiser says hospitals and emergency departments will remain open. They'll be staffed by doctors, managers, and contingency workers. But the action is another sign of wider, growing labor unrest in the United States. Unions have become bolder about asking for better pay and benefits as inflation soars. Cardiology lab worker Armando Velasco says it's a reasonable request. 
it's ridiculous that we're asking for six percent and Kaiser just doesn't want to give it. Yeah, it's not it's not even fair. We're not asking to be a part of the millionaire club. We're just asking to be part of the society and be able to afford gas without having to go to job. That's all we're asking. That's fair. The company and unions both said that talks were ongoing, with negotiators working through the night. A 16-year-old Iranian girl is in critical condition and in a coma after reportedly falling unconscious following a confrontation in the Tehran metro over a hijab law violation. A 16-year-old girl is in critical condition in Tehran after falling into a coma on Sunday following a confrontation with agents on the metro for violating the hijab law. That's according to two prominent rights activists who spoke on condition of anonymity due to the sensitivity of the matter. CCTV footage shared by state news agency IRNA shows Armida Garavan without the mandatory hijab. She is accompanied by two female friends walking towards the train. Upon entering the cabin, one of the girls is seen immediately backing off and reaching for the ground. Another girl is then dragged unconscious from the cabin by passengers. Could not immediately verify the authenticity of the footage. Garavan's case is raising concerns she may face the same fate as Masa Amini, the 22-year-old woman whose death while in the custody of morality police sparked nationwide protests. Authorities denied the claims by rights groups. In a televised interview, her parents said that their daughter had suffered a drop in blood pressure, lost her balance, and hit her head inside the metro cabin. I've seen the pictures of the subway, so I don't think what people say is accurate. I've seen the subway CCTV footage completely. I saw how she fell and how her friends dragged her out. There was nothing special that they wanted to make something out of it. I just appreciate them praying for my child's health. Rights groups on social media have called on authorities to publish the footage from inside the cabin, claiming that her parents' statement was made under duress. Over in the U.S., several prominent House GOP members have announced their intention to run for the speaker seat, including Steve Callis and Jim Jordan, and one of them declares that there is no money for Ukraine as the U.S. has other situations to deal with. Tonight, an all-out power struggle in the House, one day after a handful of rebel Republicans forced Kevin McCarthy out as speaker. The first time that's happened in American history. Now the race to succeed him already in high gear. Jim Jordan of Ohio, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, the first to announce he's running. But Jordan is known as a lightning rod on the Hill, the founder of the far-right Freedom Caucus. He's a close ally of Donald Trump. The question now, can he control the chaos in his party? An hour later, he had competition. The number two Republican in the House, Steve Scalise of Louisiana, making it official. Scalise imploring his fellow Republicans not to lose sight of our shared mission, saying they must mend the deep wounds that exist within our conference. But Scalise faces health challenges. He's currently battling blood cancer and undergoing aggressive treatment. This after he was shot and seriously wounded in 2017 at a congressional baseball practice. Right now, McCarthy's close ally, Patrick McHenry of North Carolina, is serving as interim speaker. Republicans hope to unite around a new leader next week, though many are skeptical. But they are up against the clock, just 42 days left to prevent a government shutdown. One looming question, will the new speaker support additional funding for Ukraine? Jordan says he doesn't. I'm, I'm, I'm against that. The most pressing issue on Americans' mind is not Ukraine. President Biden today admitting he's worried but he's still staying out of the speaker fight. Sir, not that they're asking, what's your advice to the next, next House speaker? <laughs> That's above my pay grade. Europe's quest to build a common geopolitical purpose brought four dozen of its leaders to Granada. However, when the Azerbaijani president stayed away, its credibility suffered a blow. European flags hoisted over the historic Alhambra Palace and reinforce security along the streets as the Spanish city of Granada prepares to welcome European leaders for back-to-back -back summits over two days. First up will be the European Political Community Conference on Thursday, followed by an informal meeting between the leaders on Friday. Organizers hope to also host sideline talks between Armenia and Azerbaijan under the mediation of France, Germany and the European Council in order to discuss the situation in Nagorno-Karabakh.
However, hopes were dashed when Azeri President Ilham Aliyev pulled out of the European meeting. Of course, it's painful that a trip didn't happen. But you are hopeful that this watershed document, which is still on the table, will be signed at the right time. A spokesman for the party of Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said Aliyev decided to stay away because Ankara was not invited to take part in the meeting between Baku and Yerevan. Also snubbed from the summit's guest list, Russia's President Vladimir Putin and Belarus's President Alexander Lukashenko, despite the war in Ukraine likely topping the agenda. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is widely expected to make an appearance in Grenada to drum up more support and money from Western allies. While the short time frame of the summit is unlikely to allow for many political breakthroughs, the event is still a rare occasion to have leaders of rival nations such as Serbia and Kosovo gathered in one plenary room. We'll be back with more world news after this short commercial break. U.S. election updates on to the road at the White House now. As some Republicans are issuing calls for Donald Trump to jump into the recently vacated House Speaker role, the former president says he's focused on just one thing, getting back into the White House. Trump, his adult sons and his businesses are being sued for up to $250 million in penalties stemming from what New York authorities described as persistent business fraud. Despite the trial, Trump took a minute to answer reporters' questions about the possibility of a speakership bid and stated that his focus is only on the presidency. At least three House Republicans have publicly called for Trump to be named the next Speaker of the House after Kevin McCarthy was removed. McCarthy has that said that he does not plan to seek the speakership again, setting up a race for his replacement as reps. Steve Callis and Jim Jordan have already launched their bids. Trump, whose first venture into politics was running for president, has no grounding in the legislative process and has never indicated he would want to become speaker. In its history, the House has never had a speaker who wasn't a member of Congress, though it technically isn't a constitutional requirement. Moving on to a crisis hit Ghana. The demonstrations are the latest show of frustration with rising living costs, joblessness and hardship in one of the West Africa's largest economies. Similar multi-day protests gripped the capital last month. Singing, dancing against high cost of living and lack of jobs. Hundreds of demonstrators were once again gathered in the Ghanaian capital Accra to protest against economic hardship. Ghana, one of the richest countries in West Africa, has been battling its worst economic crisis, marred by soaring inflation, a high cost of living crisis, and huge public debt. Many protests have been taking place across the country over the past year. This time, the anger turned on Ghana Central's bank, calling for the resignation of its governor, Ernest Addison, and his two deputies, after the institution posted a record loss of nearly 61 billion Ghanaian cities in 2022. The protest, dubbed Occupy BOG, was led by the minority members of Ghana's parliament. If the whole country needs one billion from the IMF every year, for three years, to fix our problem, and Edison in one year can superintend the loss of five billion, who is our problem? So, so the way the economy is going, it's going into a negative. There's no progress, there's nothing. If you're a Ghanaian now, you are uh, just... Uh, to be a world war person, the, the, the youth, they are suffering. The suffering is too much. The suffering is too much. Last May, the cocoa and gold rich country secured a $3 billion loan from the IMF to help get Ghana back on its feet. But many say too little was done to help those struggling to make ends meet. The 2030 FIFA World Cup will be quite different from previous World Cups. It will have games played across three continents for the first time as the tournament celebrates its 100th anniversary.
The 2030 Men's Football World Cup will see games played in six countries across three continents, Africa, Europe and South America. FIFA announced on Thursday that Spain, Portugal and Morocco will co-host the tournament, while Uruguay, Argentina and Paraguay will stage the tournament's three opening games to mark 100 years since the first World Cup. Morocco and Portugal will take on hosting duties in the global tournament for the first time, while Spain last hosted in 1982. With the African Cup of Nations and then the World Cup 2030 in Morocco, the country will prosper and more tourists and national teams from different countries will meet in Morocco. It has been a discreet, constant and hard work. It's a work of many months and years. Now we have an important task ahead of us, which is to meet the goals requested by FIFA. It is the first time the World Cup will have games played across three continents. Uruguay especially holds significance in that the country hosted the inaugural World Cup final in 2030. FIFA President Gianni Infantino said the World Cup would unite the world while celebrating together the beautiful game. In a divided world, FIFA and football are uniting, bringing everyone together, bringing football everywhere. All six host nations automatically qualify for the 48-team tournament. Formal approval is set to be given next year at a meeting of the 211 FIFA member federations. FIFA also opened the bidding to countries wishing to host the World Cup in 2034. One of the U.S.'s long-standing murder mysteries may come to an end, after all. The man accused in the murder of famed rapper Tupac Shakur was in court. He will be agreed in two weeks. He will also enter a plea and have a trial date set. Making his first court appearance today, the man accused of murder in the Tupac Shakur case will be arraigned in two weeks when he'll enter a plea and have a trial date set. What's his name again? Evil. Dwayne Davis says prominent attorney Edie Fall, who's worked on other high-profile cases involving Snoop Dogg and Biggie Smalls, will represent him. With no comment from Fall, the confessed gangster is accused of orchestrating the drive-by shooting that killed the famed rapper on the Vegas Strip in 1996. It's been lingering for 27 years, but uh, I felt there was sufficient legally admissible evidence. For the first time, we are now seeing the evidence prosecutors used to secure their indictment, including photos of Tupac's bullet-riddled car and surveillance video of him leaving a casino. He leaned over on the window, we rolled down the window, pop. Tonight, Tupac's family has mixed emotions. I mean, the feeling was, really? It was a wow? Uh, 27 years is a long time. As the only man still alive in the car that night, prosecutors say Davis is left to blame for one of the most infamous cold cases in U.S. history. Welcome back. Heavy rains lashed the Sikkim state of India. For more on that story and more, let's go to the world in a minute. 14 people were killed and 102 were missing after heavy rains caused the Himalayan glacier lake in northeast India to burst its banks. A wildfire raged on the Spanish island of Terranif amid unseasonably hot temperatures. It has forced the evacuation of around 3,000 people from their homes. Israeli troops killed two Palestinians during a clash with gunmen in the occupied West Bank. The two Palestinians were in a car from which shots were fired at an Israeli vehicle. The British government is proposing to ban younger generations from ever buying cigarettes, a move that would give the country some of the world's toughest smoking rules and hurt tobacco firms. Assistant Minister for Treasury Angela said at a news conference that the effigy is expected to appear on the $1 coin by Christmas time, with the rest of the coins being rolled out in 2024. That is all we have for you on World News Tonight. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight in China as a fascinating light carnival highlighted an immersive experience and created spectacular scenes for holidaymakers in the Sichuan province. Thank you for watching. Good night.